So welcome back to Module 4, everyone. I, again, I'm Jean Stoner, freelance consultant and a team member of the Willow Creek Employment Ministry. Rob? And I'm Rob O'Brien. I work for Cloud for Good as a managed services consultant in the Salesforce ecosystem, but I was a recruiter and have been with the Employment Services Ministry for about seven years. So today we're going to do, or in this module, we're going to do a really cool demo of how to edit the profile that we um, highlighted in, in module three. And we're gonna show you some activities that will be a game changer for your job search. All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna edit the profile. We're gonna do a live demo. So you at home can, can feel very comfortable editing your profile. This is a PC demonstration. So if you're on a mobile phone, it'll be a little different, but at least you'll get a good feel for what to do. And then uh, we're gonna focus on these activities for search strategy. Moving on. Okay, I'm gonna do a LinkedIn demonstration. And what you're gonna see is before you get into LinkedIn and edit your profile, you wanna go into settings and privacy. You go to me, you go to settings and privacy, and then Rob, next slide. You're gonna turn off under this section called how others see your LinkedIn activity. You're gonna turn off share job changes, education changes and work anniversaries from profile. That's critical to do so your contacts don't see that you're making changes to the profile. All right, now we're gonna go into a demonstration here. I'm going to be sharing the screen. So just give us a minute to transition here. I'm sharing my screen, I'm going into LinkedIn. Here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I just talked about. I'm going to me, I'm going to settings and privacy. I'm going down, down, down into privacy, that second section, how others see your LinkedIn activity. I'm going to share job changes and I'm gonna click and make sure it says no. By doing that, your contacts won't be getting an email every time you make a change. So the first thing we wanna do as we edit is we wanna to go to um, our LinkedIn page. To edit, you always go to view profile. Remember when you're editing, it's all about me. We talked about our contact information. So we wanna go into our contact information we want to make sure that that LinkedIn URL, your profile, is, is um, customized. We want to make sure if you want your phone number, it's there, and that your email is current. So if any of that information needs to change, you just click on that pencil mark, and you can make these edits. All right? I just want to interject really quick here that it's really important to put your phone number in uh, that you can be reached at because if a recruiter does not have access via the recruiting tool, but maybe works for a smaller company, this is a way that they can get in touch with you and offer you or talk to you about a position. Thanks, Rob. Um, okay, so if you need to customize your URL, you click right here and you look up here in this corner where it says edit your URL, you're gonna click on that pencil and you're gonna get rid of all the numbers to the right of your name. Okay, you just want it to be your first name, your last name, all lowercase, no space. If that name is already taken, you hit save, and if it's taken, put a middle initial in there. Okay, that's how you customize your URL. Now let's go back here. Let's go back to your contact information for a minute. I, we don't wanna to get too hung up on this, but... Um, I'm going to me, I'm going to view profile. I'm going back to my contact information. And let's say, oh gosh, my email is not the right one. I don't want this to be my primary email. What you have to do is you have to go back to me. You have to go back to settings and privacy. You go into your account and right away, it enables you to change your email address, add email addresses, make it primary. So it's a very simple process. It's just under account versus privacy. Very simple process to change your email. Okay, now we're moving on to photo. Now, 
we're got remember we're going to me we want to whenever you want to edit your profile you go to view profile in photo if if you just click on here oh i'm sorry you click the pencil mark to the right of the photo and it enables you to add you can click on that and it will enable you to change out your photo super simple you just need a photo on your desktop and you can load that right in. While we're here, remember how we talked about a background picture? We're gonna click on that pencil mark. We wanna get rid of this background picture. So we're gonna click on that pencil mark. We're gonna go to um, the, we're gonna change that photo. We're gonna go to the desktop. Let's see if I have anything on my desktop that will work. LinkedIn picture, maybe, I don't know what this is gonna be, but there we go. We, we found a LinkedIn that we picture that we liked when we Google LinkedIn background pictures. And all we're doing is we're clicking on it and we just change our background picture. You see how easy that is? Um, kind of interesting. I'm not sure if Bubbles is my brand, but um, it's, it's, it's a simple way to change your background picture. Are you sure you want to discard changes? No, thanks. Okay, now the next thing we want to show you is your headline. So to the right of your picture, you're going to go to pencil mark. You're going to go down to your headline and you can completely replace it. Um, let's say I want to replace this word. So I'm going to say HR professional, HR manager and resume writer. I'm loading this with keywords. And see this number will tell me how many more characters I can use for my headline. Okay, for right now I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click save. So again, we went to the pencil mark to the right of our picture. We just went down to headline and made that change. Moving on, we're gonna go down, down and you see about. So I'm going to click on here. If I want to replace what I have in this section, all you simply do is you click on that pencil mark. And many times when I write this about section, oops, sorry about that. Um, I do it in a Word document and then I copy and paste it into this section. You see that um, I use a lot of white space. I don't have sentences more than two or three sentences long because the shorter, the better. Recruiters are scanning that information. I use headlines as much as possible to draw in the recruiter. That's the about section. Now we're going to under experience, down, down, down. If you wanna, if you want to um, edit your experience, you simply click on that pencil mark, you go here. Many times people wanna fix their, their um, their years. So I'm currently working in this role. Let's say I just got laid off. I would click that and I would put in my month. So it's April of 2020. So you just follow the, follow the prompts and that enables you to make changes. Okay. Many times you want to refresh this content in this section. So if you do that, you simply just delete and then add your new content, usually writing in Word and then copying and pasting into the section. Rob, any comments to make here? Anything to add? Yeah, um, one of the things, and I think you might be talking about it, I noticed like for your LHH experience there, you yeah. have uh, coached 300 candidates. Um, you wanna talk a little bit about why that's important for the mobile experience? Yes, yeah, so remember, you want your resume to be click worthy. So if you have some amazing achievements that you wanna showcase and brag about, having these numbers, oh, I'm sorry, having those numbers in your headline is a really smart thing to do. And I happen to have some good numbers that in my business matter to the reader. So I added them in my headline. Thanks, Rob. Anything else before moving on to education? No, I think you're doing a great job. Okay, <laughs> education. 
Notice my education, I don't have years. And the reason for that is my education is old. I graduated from ISU, I think in 1979. So to get rid of, to get rid of your years, you just go here to the drop down menu and you, and you put start, start year is year and year is year. You see how you do that? So you just go all the way to the top and put in year and you can save it and get rid of the years in education. All right, moving on to um, skills. Here we go. So show more. Remember I told you we want as many skills as we can in our LinkedIn. You can see that I've loaded this thing with, with skills. I'm probably, I don't know how many, but it looks like I'm somewhere between 30 and 40. All right, so if you have to add a new skill, you click here. And I'll put um, LinkedIn Writer, LinkedIn Writer. Oh, I have that already. I'm going to put um, Baseball Coach. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm not a baseball coach, but I'm going to pretend I am for, the, for this demonstration. Baseball Coach. We're going to add that skill. So Super simple. You just add a skill. Now, remember how we talked about the top three skills being what the recruiters see on a mobile phone. So let's say I don't like one of these skills and I want something to go to the bottom. I'm going to click on this pencil mark. I'm going to go to that, um, that pin and knock it down. Then I'm going to look at my other uh, skills down here and I'm going to pull something up to the top. So what would, what do I want to, um, let me just pull up teaching adults. There you go. So now you're going to see my top three skills. Uh, teaching adults has just been moved to the top. And all we did, how we did that is we just played around with these pins. You see how simple that is? Playing around with the pins, clicking them down or clicking them up. Super simple. Recommendations. Okay, look at the bottom of my profile. I have 23 recommendations. I use that because I'm a small business and recommendations are helpful. But let's say you want a recommendation. So I'm going to go up to the top. Whenever you get lost on LinkedIn, go home. I'm going to go to Rob. I'm going to ask Rob for a recommendation. I'm not really going to do that, but I'm, we're just practicing. So I'm putting Rob's name in here. And then what I'm going to do is I go to the right of Rob's picture. I go down. I click on request a recommendation. And I'm just going to follow the prompts, fill it out. And, and within a minute, it's going to go off to Rob and request a recommendation. Again, to get a recommendation, just go home type in that person's name. I'm going to type in my husband's name. Go to, go to that profile. I'm going to the right of the picture. I'm clicking on Moore's and I'm going to request a recommendation. How nice is that, huh? Okay, now I'm going back to my profile and we talked about accomplishments. So you see this nice blue button to the right of my picture? I'm going to go down, down, down to this cool thing called accomplishments. And I'm going to make sure that if there's anything else I need to add to my profile, I'm going to add it right here. Okay. Additional information. Let's click on that. I'm not sure what's in that. All right. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to show you how to connect to add people to your network. So I'm going to go to, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to type in someone's name. I'm going to type in Ann Rand, who is with Willow. I don't think I'm connected with her. Oh, maybe I am. But there should be a, a more button. Um, oh, well, there's a remove a connection, but right here you'll, you'll, you'll be seeing a, a button to connect. Rob, is there anybody you can think I should connect with that to demonstrate how this works? Are you connected with uh, Kevin O'Brien? Uh, I might be. Let me talk about, let me see about Kevin O'Brien. 
Rob's husband. I am connected to Kevin. Um, gosh, but but you get it. You just find that person um, and go to that more button or go to the, there'll be a button and it'll say connect and you'll be able to connect to that person. For connections, if you're just getting started, you want to have, you want to set a goal for 50, but you can see for me, I have over 500 connections. I think right now my total connections is over a thousand. Rob, how about your connections? I think I have about 1,500. 1,500, right? There you go. Okay, so, um, all right, so we've covered connections. Now, what we wanna show you is um, a thing we call, guts. let me just look at, uh, Rob, could you cue me up with the slide, next couple of slides? Oh, job postings, let's show you how to find a job. So we're gonna click on jobs right here. And we're going to, if you scroll down, it's gonna recommend jobs for you. So sometimes people find this as a super helpful resource to find jobs. But if you don't find exactly what you're looking for, I'm gonna type in human resource manager, Chicago, Illinois. Um, and I'm gonna search and I'm gonna see jobs. And what I love about LinkedIn and why I would recommend LinkedIn as your primary source to find jobs is because it'll show you the keywords that are critical to your resume. It'll show you how many kinds of people have applied for this job. Um, and many times it'll give you salary information. So it gives you a lot of rich information. Now I'm paying for the upgrade, the $29.95 a month. And I think by doing that, you get a lot of, lot of um, extra information. And while you're in job search, if you can afford it, we'd recommend that, or I would recommend you pay that. And I'll show you why in a minute. There's also this really cool thing here under jobs. You can sort by um, most relevant or most recent. You can sort by how many miles from your home. You can sort by date posted. And I would tell you only do within the last couple of weeks because if a job's been out there longer, there's a high probability somebody's um, found that job. Um, features, easy apply, under 10 applications. The company, you can search by company and experience level. You can search by different, I love internship, entry level. You can search by experience level. Rob, anything else to add about job search? Um, did you mention, I didn't hear you say it, but maybe you said it, um, that you can save your job searches and then it will um, put it in your daily summary so it comes to you? Right, I didn't do that, but that's a really cool feature. Once you apply to a job, you can save that job search. Awesome. Anything else there, Rob? Um, the only thing I'm gonna say is that uh, it's also very helpful to have the uh, paid version when you're getting ready to go on that interview. Um, I had a friend of mine who had the paid version and she used it to her advantage because she actually looked at who she was interviewing with and found that they had actually worked with the same person in their history. So it gave them something really um, great to talk about during the interview process. Thank you, Rob. Okay, just a couple more things for this demo. Um, we're gonna go home for a minute. And one thing to do as part of your search strategy is we, we talk about showing gratitude. You can do it daily, uh, weekly. Um, and the way to do that is you see how your connections are putting news feeds in here. And to show gratitude, you can like them, comment on it, share it. And by doing that, you're saying to your community, I value you. I think your ideas are important, but it also enables you every time you share 
your name goes in front of your entire community and they think of you. They're like, boy, I wonder what's going on with Rob today. Boy, I, I may have an opportunity. Maybe I should reach out to her. So the more gratitude you can show on LinkedIn, you have a discipline of 10 minutes, 20 minutes a week, the better. Another way to show gratitude, if I go to Rob O'Brien, I want to show gratitude specifically to Rob. Um, I could go to her skills down here. They're coming up. And I can endorse Rob for her skills. Um, and I, I'm going to endorse her. It'll ask, but just by clicking on her skills, that's a way to endorse her that Rob is really good at what she does, human resource event management. Okay. And then it's going to ask me, I'm going to say she's highly skilled, select her, we work together on the same project. So endorsing people is a great way to show, I appreciate you, it's gratitude. Remember 10 to 20 minutes a week, it's called personal branding. It's gonna help you get noticed and be active in your community. So the last thing we wanna show you is what we call gutsy networking. This is a game changer for job search and the better you are, the faster your search will go. So the first thing we want to do, Rob, give me a name of a company you'd like to work for. Salesforce. <laughs> okay, so Salesforce. So Rob wants to work for Salesforce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to look for that company. Um, it's the one with the blue on the bottom there. Next one. That one. Yep. Okay, okay so I'm following... Salesforce. If I wasn't, it would give me a little box to say follow. You want to follow them. And over here, it'll tell me if I know somebody that works there. And I do. I know Kelly that works here. So I'm going to click on Kelly and I'm going to message Kelly to say, hey, Kelly, um, confidentially, I'm thinking about working for Salesforce. Um, can we have a phone call this week? I've applied for this job and kind of brainstorm with you how I might um, network into the company. But always when you do that, you want to start with, hey, how are you doing? Haven't talked to you in a while. Love to catch up with and hear about the family and how you're doing through this difficult time. So make the message personal, but also ask for help. You always want to start here. And Kelly, they may have a recruiting incentive for Kelly to recommend you to the company. So that's something you want to talk to her in the conversation about. But let's say Kelly doesn't respond and you really want to get into this company. So we're going to put in Salesforce. We're going to go to step two. This is as easy as one, two, three. We're going to type in the recruiter. We're going to try to find a, a recruiter for Salesforce. I'm not getting anybody. Um, I might want need to search for people. All. Okay, so here I have a sales recruiter at Salesforce, a senior recruiter at Salesforce, a recruiter at Salesforce. So you got to kind of play around with these different people you find, and if you if you um, find the right recruiter, you can message them. Hey, Jackie, I've just applied for this great opportunity at Salesforce. Um, I think I'm a perfect fit. Here's why. I'd love to have a phone call with you over the next week. Attaches my resume. Let's connect. Okay? So you're trying to make a personal relationship with Jackie. Rob, any comment on that? So I always thought that uh, your story about Nick was really good with this. Mm -hmm. um, or actually maybe it was Katie, I think it was, that she was reaching out to heads of nursing and uh, didn't know anybody necessarily, but within, what was it, maybe a week or two, she had a couple of interviews. And so this might be uncomfortable for people. And I just want to address this and say, you know, at this point, my philosophy is what have you got to lose? You don't have the position anyway, so why not give it a try? Because you might be surprised at how quickly they respond to you. 
Right. And in that example that we're talking about my daughter, what we did is we went to step three, we got to be a gutsy networker. So here, Salesforce VP, Rob, what kind of VP would you be interested in? VP of what? Probably uh, salesforce.org, not NPSP, maybe put in there, see what happens. NPSP? Yep. Yep. It's a platform that I work on. Okay, so now we're finding different people and Rob will look through these names and see if there's a senior person that might be worth messaging or connecting with. Mm -hmm. And then she would send a message to that person and say, hey, hey, um, Simone, if that was what we were doing, you know, I've been trying to, I've applied for this great opportunity. I think I'm a perfect fit. Here's why. I've been trying to reach HR, but no luck wondering if we could connect or if I could have a conversation with you or a member of your staff over the next week or two, love to have a conversation. So the more gutsy you are, the higher probability, especially in this difficult time, that you're gonna be, um, that you're gonna get some kind of, of, of feedback. Um, because what we're trying to do is if you just rely on job boards, you'll have to apply for 100 jobs to get 10 phone calls. It's a 10% hit rate by networking in virtually, it, you get a higher probability of getting, getting a phone call. Rob? And, oh, and I just wanna add one more thing. So earlier in the presentation, I think it was in my section, we talked about joining groups. And uh, I think I mentioned that I was a first Lego league coach. And that's actually turned out to be helpful because I was able to strike up conversations based on something totally non-job related. And then I found out that one of my uh, newer friends in the Salesforce ecosystem was actually a first Lego league coach. So we were able to trade ideas and then he's been able to help refer me to people uh, to do a, jo a job search. So that's you know, you might want to think about groups that you're interested in. You might also want to think about schools like alumni associations. Those are also really good ways to network in. And let's show, let's do a quick demo on groups. Um, I think this way under work, I think there's a group section here. You can see uh, the groups that I'm a member of. I've been a member of many groups. But Rob, you got any group? That's maybe the TED TED Talks. I don't know. TED conferences, maybe. TED Talks, TED Company. Um, what got any groups in mind, Rob? Try the first Lego League, so you can see what it, I'm talking about. League. First Lego League. First. F I R S T. First. Lego League. Yep. League. Okay. So you can see here, there's a, there's a group, if you go down just underneath Leah Fairbanks there, uh, it's, now it's under First Lego League UAE, so the First Lego League group. That's what I'm talking about is that these are people that are, are coaches or are interested, and so what it does is it gives you a starting point for a conversation, so it gives you that ease into a conversation, if you will, and then a lot of times these folks, like in my case, they worked in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, and so I was able to get some introductions that way, just based on the common, we both have kids that were in this program and we had a commonality to start a conversation. So you're gonna follow that group and then it'll show up, you can see when you go to your profile at the very bottom. Sorry about this, let me get this out of the way. Um, I'm trying to get this out of the way here. The very bottom of the profile, trying to, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that is showing up there, but it, you can go to see all, there we go. And it'll show you the, oh gosh, sorry about this. We're going to the bottom of the profile and it shows you, see all, it'll show you all the companies I follow, it'll show you all the groups I follow, and the influencers. So, you know, influencers, companies, groups, it, it just adds more robustness to your profile, and it also gets you more inf interesting information when you get your daily news feeds. 
that are come up here. All right. So that ends our demonstration. I'm going to stop sharing and move my screen to Rob, and we're just going to do a couple more slides to finish this module. OK, so as, as a summary of what we've done here today, or what Jean's done here today, a couple of things we want you to think about. Um, we're hoping that you've learned how uh, LinkedIn is a game changer for you. Uh, you've definitely learned how to uh, assess your profile and are you figure out, are you an all-star or do you need to do a little bit of work? Um, we've showed you many ways that you can edit your profile and make it more robust. And we've showed you several options for uh, LinkedIn activities for search strategies. Um, again, where, where we started is we sent you to needsmet.org. Uh, we would encourage you to go back there because there are other resources that are there that you can fully take advantage of and ask and to get additional help. And if you did find this helpful, we're hoping that you can um, share this with other people and pass it forward, especially now that it's virtual and you can just send them to the link. Anything else you wanna add? Uh, next slide, Rob. Uh, we do have virtual support. Again, uh, you can join a virtual support group as it says right here or you can learn about more one-on-one -on -one virtual support counseling by clicking this uh, tutorial link here. And again, as Jean said earlier, you can see that there's a tutorial and the overview of what's available to you via this uh, website. Right. Other, other resources, did you wanna talk about those, Jean? Uh, go ahead, Rob. Okay, so other resources that we have in the Needs Met website, there are job postings, many, many job postings. Um, to sign up for the virtual one-on-one -on -one counseling, you're just gonna go to the care center and, and follow the prompts. Uh, I did point out the tutorial guide for all the features on the website. There is a virtual support group, it's called Higher Ways. It's uh, a group that helps you with accountability so that you stay on track with your job search and do the things that you need to do. There are other videos um, of our job seeker workshops that we're working on now to get them ready to um, put on the website so that you have access to them. And there are loads of downloadable resources on the NeedsMet website. And that would be the end. So on behalf of Jean and I and the employment services team at Willow Creek, we just want to take a moment to thank you for um, joining us today, and we hope that you found this uh, insightful and helpful, and please reach out if you need some help. Thank you. Thank you.